Yes, people, Killer Keller here. Another future Ford, another moment here. Arts Arcade, Street Culture TV for Kellervision. This is where we bring you the new roar. Um, in most cases, people have been established for a bit, um, making their noises in the right places across the country and beyond. Today, we have a gentleman that's most definitely versatile in his field, <laughs> from MPC's production to singing to MCing in the world of hip hop and beyond. Lefty inside the house. <laughs> Come on. Nice to meet me. <laughs> <laughs> the pleasure's all yours. <laughs> How are you, my brother? Ah, uh, mate, I'm good. I think, I believe. It's been a it's been a rough few days, man. It's yeah. been a rough few days, bro. I went to a small world festival to perform. Ooh. Uh, the plan was one night. Four days later, just about scraped my way home, bro. Whoa. So here I am, a shell of my former self, a whisper of a man, <laughs> but still, still partially me. Yeah, which exactly. is all I need, really. <laughs> Can't forget myself. Uh, you uh, seasoned in performing at festivals? Is that? Is nah, that it's just it's a new thing for me. It's actually I'm not even seasoned in tents. I've never owned a tent. I did a Latitude Festival not long ago with um, the Sounds Like Boys, uh, Doc Brown and Shuffle T and them boys. It was mm. like a, a, a game show, a rhyming game show. And uh, I borrowed my mate's tent and boah, I struggled with that. Putting that <laughs> thing up, I struggled, mate. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah. some, uh, some young lady, a uh, kind young lady decided to help me. Mm. So we got there in the end. But mm. yeah, man, it, it's something I want to get into, man. I like the festival vibe and I, I, I want to get more bookings, but I just not, I don't know how to do it, how to get bookings and shit. Is it so? You've you've done events and such before. Yeah, um, allegedly. It, yeah, <laughs> out there, the, tr the tree does fall in the forest and <laughs> makes noise. Hence why you're here. But do you do you are you readily out? Because this is the thing with you. You've got such a live, um, you have versatility. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like to really encapsulate all the different elements that you bring in. Yeah. You know, you you kind of need that. 20 minutes, half an hour to really execute all those different areas. Yeah, for sure. That's that's something I'm kind of working on as well, is like the trajectory of my of my set kind of. Like I used to start moody and try to finish hyper, but I think starting moody can like, it's hard to like take away the mood, I think. I think it's better to finish moody. So I try to start like all, start my 80s shit and then try to slowly get a bit more serious. But mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I just don't know what to do at the moment. Like, I kind of don't want to be serious. Like, when I make music, I like making sad music, moody music. But when I perform, I like turning up. Mm. So it's a, it's hard to find that balance, kind of. It's hard, isn't it? Because with with the music you create, there is a sense of environment and the way that it comes out, and that really is definably your you know, your present state. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But then when you go and do live stuff, all of a sudden it's like, oh, yeah. I've got to be a a different, a different yeah, legit, vibe. Legit, man. So yeah, I'm trying to find a balance, but we'll get there, we'll get there. Mm. Where did it all begin? Um, what, musically? Yeah. Um, do you know what, yeah? So my dad's uh, my dad's best friend and his best man is a man called Roy Carter. He was in uh, Heat Wave. Do you remember the song, Boogie Nights? Mm. So he was in that band. And uh, one day he came to visit us because he lives in Birmingham. And uh, he brought me a, a PC, bro with uh, Hip Hop EJ. Don't know if you remember that one, it was all loops and that. Mm -hmm. And you could make beats and it had like vocal loops and whatever. And uh, I was fucking around with that. And I proper liked it, I really enjoyed it. But I, I thought it was just a game. Mm -hmm. I didn't think it was like, I didn't think there were people making music on computers. Uh, and then one time he come back and he got me uh, FL7, I think. And I was fucking up FL7, bro. I was a beast on that. Just going and just uh, sampling bare shit. I used to sample a lot of like, Aaliyah, <laughs> shit like that. Yeah, yeah. Then, um, then my mum fucked my fucking PC off, bro. Huh? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She fucked it off, man. She, I don't know why. I can't say it for legal reasons. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but yeah, so I started spitting. I used to do grime, man. I used to go on uh, little radio things. It was like, I went West Thames College. I was just spitting like everywhere, just going about, bro, and making a little name for myself. So what, what, it became the subsidiary to what? <laughs> Your passion started off as, yeah. In be making beats, you then got into rapping. <coughs> yeah, because I also I, I played violin at one point as well. Uh, I wanted to play drums, but uh, my mom said, "Nah, you're playing violin." And I played. I think I got to grade three, and one day, I was in the playground after school. I just took out the violin, smashed it on the floor. So I'm not playing anymore. <laughs> and that was that, bro. 
So it was quite rock and roll with the violin. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was just set on fire like James Brown. So grime was the uh, vocation to begin with then? Yeah. With all those other influences that you yeah, had? Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, so I, I, it was producing at first, then vocals. Then I, I went to West Thames College to do music technology and um, kind of got back into producing, but I never had a computer at home or nothing like that. So, yeah, I was just kind of like, just learning shit. But it's a bit hard when you do uh, music tech and that. It's a bit annoying because they'll teach you like, let's say I was doing Reason. Mm. So we'll do Reason for a couple of months. I'm like, oh yeah, Reason's all right. And they're like, forget about Reason. Cubase now. Do you know what yeah, I mean? And yeah, I'm just like, yeah, ah, yeah. couldn't really like, like I like to, when I like something, I'm obsessed and I just rinse it until I know the inner mechanics of it. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But I can't like just flip between things. Where my, my brain doesn't really pay attention like that. Mm. So I kind of got, uh, fell off from producing man. it just seemed like too technical I was sick of just learning how programs work I just wanted to make beats yeah it's like an, I mean? an ever dropping well of learning as you go and yeah for real you've got to be really into tech really haven't you yeah exactly exactly and I'm I wasn't so much back then so yeah so then I just kind of lived my life for a bit wasn't really doing much bro then um I met uh Shockstar, man. R.I.P. Shocks, man. R.I.P. My boy, Shocks. Oh, rest in peace. Rest mm -hmm. in peace, R.I.P. Sharon. Uh, met Shocks. Uh, actually, yeah. Uh, you know when you go to the job centre, you're signing on, bro. Well, maybe you do or you don't. But if I do, uh, there's a point where they're like, you've been doing this too long, mate. <laughs> you've got to go and do this now, yeah? you got to go do a little course. Go so you, I yeah. got to that point and fucking had to do some fitness instructor course. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was a fitness instructor for a bit. In a tutoring leisure centre, but I met uh, Shocks there at the course, and uh, we just we just got on like a house on fire straight away, bro. And uh, his name was Chris. My name's Chris as well. His name was Chris. Mm -hmm. So they had to come up with a nickname for us. So uh, he he was Crispy Chris, and I was Crunchy Chris. <laughs> <laughs> and the girls used to call us. I remember one time we were walking uh, in the lunch break, and one girl was like, "Crunchy, mm -hmm. Crunchy." So I was called Crunchy for a while. But yeah, I met Shocks. He. Uh, we, uh, on the first day I met him, we went for a spliff. He started playing beats off his phone. He's like, yeah, I made beats, mate. I was like, what? Started spitting. Couldn't believe it. Fucking got the bus home together, spitting all the way. Then he was like, I wanted to meet my crew, Legionnaires, man. So then I was in Legionnaires. Wow. And uh, they just, like, crafted me into a killer. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Into a true Swiss Army knife wow. of a rapper. Do you know what I mean? So double time... Like, Shocks used to do the double time. We had a Dre the Veli that would do these mad words, like a uh, word, not word games, or what would you call it? Like, call like word play. Word play, but uh, it's in a weird way, in a weird showing off. It was like taking you down this mad path, bro. Do you know what I mean? You you didn't even realize what you'd missed and you didn't even realize what you'd understood. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Then we had Anyway, we had uh, Terror Bliss. There were so many kind of uh, different styles that I kind of picked up a bit from everything and then basically just became this hunk of a man that you see before you <laughs> let's talk about don't flop let's talk about the battle rap mm. um lane yeah because that is a, a separate mental <laughs> chinese burn of a of a of a of a, of a, of a challenge isn't yeah, it? it's a whole other string on the bow like it is for sure man the very different uh <clears throat> very different like i don't prepare much for music do you know what i mean i feel like music presents itself to you all, uh, lyrics, ideas, just present themselves to you. Mm. But uh, with a rap battle, you have to, it's like writing a book, kind of. Mm. Do you know what I mean? You have to have like a story that you're trying to tell. You have to have an a arc and shit and a theme. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, I actually don't really like rap battles. It's intense. Yeah, it's a bit much, man. It's just like, my my brain doesn't do well with just like pain, like sticking on things. So if it's like, oh, you're battling this guy in a month, it's just like, I'll be on it now. And then by two days, I'm just like, who? Which guy? <laughs> <laughs> like, I kind of don't want to do it now. But. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, it's just the, in the intensity, the anxiety of it kicks in, right? Yeah, for sure. So that's why I stopped. Uh, I don't know if you've seen many of my battles, but that's why I stopped. Uh, at the beginning, I used to do bars and that. I used to really want to show people I was a rapper. But there's no beat, so I don't get why it's not rapping to me. Do you know what I mean? Mm. If, if, if it's a cappella and it's just me against you, it's a room for the people. I feel like the important thing is to, if you have everyone laughing against mm -hmm. your opponent, you've won. 
Do you know what I mean? R regardless of bars or how good a rapper you are, it's more like a fight, a, mm. a verbal fight. So to make it easier for, for myself, I stopped writing bars and I just looked at the guy, just thought, you've got funny ears. It is. Yeah, yeah. Round one, it is. <laughs> how, much, how, much, how, much, how much does that throw you off when the crowd start really participating and getting on your side? Because does the pressure build up? Does nah, the... that gets me going. Really? That gets me going. And it's like, once that happens, once the crowd's like, go on, lefty, or, or just laughing at... Sometimes like, you can have a set-up bar and they're, they're dying at the set-up bar. And I'm, I haven't even said the joke yet, do you know what I mean? But <laughs> it feels good. So it like gets my confidence up. And when I'm like that, I can never choke. I don't understand how people choke. I don't understand. Just say something. Eh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, don't say nothing. Just say something. But again, that goes back to your informative times with the crew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sparring. For sure. Because sure. that's, that's it. Like, we never... All the little... Uh, obviously, there's silly little battles we used to have, but there was never a time someone choked. Because mm. you're just having fun. It's just like, uh, you could say something silly, that's shit, but don't choke. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, as a a rapper, of a performer, a vocalist, the one thing you want to do is is say something. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Or, or you fucked it. <laughs> yeah, it's the most guttural um, aspect of of lyricism. Yeah, it's just say something. Um, your, your play on music is something I think a lot of people <coughs> would admire so far as it feels like a sense of freedom. Like you go in on things... It's almost spontaneous, and and even your delivery vocally, it's just you know random selection pick do. It's, it's, it's quite a, it's it's charming because you don't get enough of that. There's a lot of rigidness. Yeah. How do you keep that flexibility? Uh, to be honest, what I've done is I've allowed myself to let things happen. I've 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 taken a step back from controlling everything, so. Things just happen in life, do you know what I mean? And like, if you allow it, you won't, if you like, don't block your blessings, do you know what I mean? So sometimes a weird idea comes to me, and before I'd think, ah, oh, that's just a weird idea, or I'd talk to someone about it, and they'd tell me it's a weird idea. Now I just, if I get a feeling or an idea, I'll just execute it, mm. and then we'll, we'll worry about it afterwards. And if you do something straight away, then it's not taking a big chunk of your time. Mm. You just bow, like, oh, I want to do a fucking uh, 70s funk grind beat. Let's try and do it straight away. Mm. You can't do it then. Oh, it didn't work. But do you know what I mean? It's just, just think less and do more. Like, I'm not really, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a porker, not a walker, you know what I mean? Mm. I'm, I'm, I don't really talk about things anymore. Mm. I just do it and show you. I guess that's and show a, myself as well. But it shows in the scarcity of these kind of conversations that, you know, you, you don't generally talk too much a great deal about it how, what's mm. your um what's uh, how many how many tunes a day ideas a day do you think you you knock out uh i'd say three three four yeah. but they could be like a merch uh design mm. it could be like i'm gonna call my ex <laughs> it could be, but i do get these like very strong ideas like every day there's always something that i really want to go for and like musically yeah probably about two or three but it's just, it's hard to control what they are. Like, mm -hmm. like I said, there is no control. So it's, the main thing is not to let yourself go down like a, a rabbit hole mm. and forget about other stuff. Do you know what I mean? So that's why my new thing, my new year's resolution this year was execute every idea. Yeah, just do, do it. I mean? Like straight away. A lot of people don't do that. They don't, man. And I don't understand. Well, I, I do understand why, because it's easier. I guess it's easy, but I don't think it's, I think it's easier to do your ideas because otherwise you have this weird inner turmoil where you're just like, did, oh, would it have worked? Or am I good enough? Like, should I do it? Can I do it? Mm. And it's just like, if you just do it, then it's done and you move on. And then that all that fucking thinking is just doesn't happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? What's, uh, what's the future, my brother? What's the future for, uh, for Lefty? The future, I mean, only God knows, but I'm sure it's glorious. <laughs> I have no doubt. I'm going. It's too late for me. I've, uh, I've made my bed... I'm going to not sleep in it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I've, I've made my tent. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Finally yeah, built the tent and I'm staying in it. That's it. I'm, I'm all in at this point. Like, this is me, isn't it? Uh, like I said, it's it's our duty, bro. This is uh, the person that God made me, bro. 
and I'm sure he did that for a reason. So I can only imagine the the glory ahead, bro. Mm. And uh, all I have to do is make sure I'm in the right place where that I need to be, and just on my shit, bro. So uh, my eight, my eighties album greatest hits. I'm, I've got greatest hits too coming. On the nice. Way. I've got my mixtapes. Uh, little series cappuccino I've, I've dropped one and two i've got cappuccino three coming that's gonna be the last one dope mixtape with peace soldier coming uh the album for my late brother Shockstar. uh he he sadly never got to release a project he's the Damn. one that he facilitated all like he recorded all of us mm -hmm. in our beats mixed our shit, taught us and put so much into us that he never had managed to do his project so we we uh we're working on finishing that man getting that out that's incredible yeah but um yeah man i just want to i just want to feed the people like we said bro i just want to like make the right make music that's gonna help people get through certain things and help them celebrate certain things mm -hmm. do you know what i'm saying so uh yeah what about you <laughs> what me we're out here, man. We're doing it. Yeah, we're doing it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah my God. I love to see it. I really love it's seeing it. It's great to have inspired, you here, bro, man. man. It's great to have you here, Lefty. Thank no, you so much it. for joining Thank us. Thank you for bro. having me, of course. Yeah, okay. Big up big up Mongo as well, man. The yeah, Mongosaurus. Big up Mongo. Come on. My Donny, the general. Killer Kello out. Future Ford. You know what I do? Let's get into some live session in. <laughs> Easy. Wicked. That was quick.